Well, we've been talking about this storm since before the nor'easter this past weekend, and now the significant wind and heavy rainmaker are on the way. It's meteorologist Joe Martucci here. We are in a level two of four risk for what we call excessive rain as we go into Tuesday and Tuesday night. What that means is that spotty flash flooding is possible, not a definite, but possible on those roads in the smaller streams. And I couldn't even rule out somewhere like the Morris River seeing flood stage as well in some of our bigger rivers. Now, the more significant flooding will be northwest of the Turnpike, where they are expecting heavier rain as well as some of that melted snow that only adds to the flooding situation. We do have a high wind warning in effect for Cape May, Cumberland, Atlantic, Ocean, Eastern Burlington, and Monmouth counties from 6 p.m. Tuesday to 6 a.m. on Wednesday for the potential of property and life-threatening winds here. And we'll talk to you about how strong those winds will be in just a minute. We have a lot of soupy air with this here. Temperatures overnight are going to be in the 50s, and that's because we have a strong tap to the tropics, bring us a lot of moisture. We call this precipitable water values, or water in a column of air. And when you compare it to average, we're three to four times above where we should be this time of the year. So this is really impressive moisture coming in, similar to what you would see Maybe in late March or early April, and here we are in the depths of winter, seeing that kind of rainmaker and storm our way. Let's get you to your future cast. It's dry for the morning, so if you want to take in your loose objects, secure the garbage cans, cut down any large hanging tree branches, that's the time to do so. Rain starts between 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Tuesday. It's fairly light until about 4 or 5 o'clock, right during that p.m. rush. And then the rain picks up, the winds will howl, and this will continue for the rest of the evening here. Thunderstorms even in the realm of possibility. Now this gets out of here around midnight or so, but then we still talk about a few areas of rain, and it's still going to be gusty as we go into your Wednesday as well here. You see we got a little bit of clearing sky throughout the day, but overall I think it's mostly cloudy. Here's a look at our forecasted rainfall totals. Generally, one to two inches. A few spots could see a little bit over two. Hopefully, it's not in that Hamilton to Vineland corridor, though, because you have seen the most rain in these past couple of weeks. I mean, you had two storms that brought over four inches of rain, and this is our fifth storm since December the 10th. Now, let's get into our winds. These are sustained winds, constantly blowing winds. Also, remember, tropical storm force winds, 39 miles an hour. Watch what happens as we go into the evening. Winds coming out of the southeast, 25 to 30 miles an hour at 6 o'clock. Here's 11 o'clock, 40 to 45 miles an hour. Tropical storm force winds, certainly possible, if not likely, at the coast and even inland. We're talking about 25, 30 mile an hour sustained winds. This will continue till about 3 o'clock or so. And then we weaken. Still going to be gusty, but the winds will weaken as we go into Wednesday. Wednesday is a gusty day, but I don't expect much in the way of power outages as we should be just below that kind of threshold here. But it even stays a little bit breezy into Wednesday night. Here's a look at our winds a half mile high, about 2,500 feet high. If we call this the 925 millibar barometric pressure level. So winds at 70 miles an hour, that could mix from this 90 or 85 mile an hour low level jet down towards the surface. And that's why I'm concerned about power outages and wind damage as we go through this time. Now the flooding here, we get southerly winds for everybody, but we're talking about the potential for places like the Cohansey River and the Morris River to see more significant flooding than places along the Atlantic Ocean and getting into the Great Harbor River in Mullica, where a south wind's more of a glancing blow, won't necessarily push any extra water into those rivers, doesn't help it drain it out, but it won't push any extra water into those rivers like we will in Cumberland County. Here's what the flooding could look like in Bival. This is moderate flood stage. You see a good part of Miller Avenue, Memorial Avenue, and High Street flooded from the water. We'll take you now to Atlantic City. We're expecting minor flood stage. Not much in the way of flooding here expected in Atlantic City. Just so susceptible Bayside roadways. And if you thought we were done with the storms after this, well, guess again. We have another storm coming for the end of the week. It's going to start in the west. Get its act together, really, as we get into... Uh, the Great Plains, and then it starts to make its way eastward here. Now, this is going to be similar to what we're seeing now with wind, rain, and coastal flooding. No snow. It's going to be a warm storm, and also the worst of this looks to be overnight again. This case, Friday night, 
into early Saturday here. I don't think it's as strong as this one, but it's the same kind of concept in terms of the storm structure and what we're going to see. Here's a look at our inland seven-day forecast. It's a dry reprieve for Thursday and Friday, but only briefly. Then we get that storm coming Friday night to early Saturday. It should be windy right through MLK weekend for you Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Strong winds out of the west. That cools us down. And then I'm looking for another storm just after MLK holiday. We'll keep you updated with that as we go forward in time.